everybody and welcome to today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining me today. As you know, the main presenter will be Saeed Jafar Hussain and today's topic is Oracle 12C RAC Upgrade Best Practices. I hope you're looking forward to it as, as much as I am. Thank you as always for logging in early. It is great that, that so many of you do. Oh, I've got a few, a few bits of feedback saying the audio is not too good. Uh, bear with me, let me try and, and figure that out. Okay, so how's it, how, how is this for everybody? Is that a little bit better? Okay, so I've got, got, got some, a mixed, some mixed uh, feedback here that it's better, but it's, but it's not great. Okay, now it's perfect. Okay, that's good. That's better. Okay, fantastic. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try and talk a little bit, a little bit quieter. So apologies for the uh, for the sound. It's it's always I think quite difficult to to get it right. Uh, but I'm glad that everybody can hear me now. So thank you once again for your for your feedback. Uh, what I was just saying is 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 thank you for logging in early. Uh, it's always great to to see so many people that do do that so we can get started uh, promptly. Uh, I hope those of you that did log in early had a chance to check out our latest ebook offer. If you didn't, please jot down the URL. If you're interested in uh, support for subversion, in particular source controlling Oracle databases, then please download your copy at redgate.com forward slash oracle hyphen svn hyphen ebook. So before we start, uh, as always, everybody will mute for the duration of the event. If at any time you can't hear me or if my sound goes uh, bad like it did just a moment ago, please do let me know through the, the questions or the chat panel. Uh, thank you once again for uh, letting me know earlier on. There will be a Q&A session at the end. Please feel free to type your questions in advance. We won't be able to answer them until the end of the webinar, uh, but obviously as Saeed Jafar Hussain goes through particular areas and you want to uh, understand a little bit more about them, please jot it down so that you don't forget at the end. This session is being recorded and I will send you a link to where you can get the recording once we've finished. So, so as I mentioned before, as you'll know, this session is Oracle 12C Rack Upgrade, Best Practices, and the main presenter today is Saeed Jafar Hussain. As always, I'm James Murter. I'm part of the Oracle team at Redgate. Uh, I'm the creator of allthingsoracle.com. If you're on Twitter, you can follow me at All Things Oracle. Uh, Saeed Jafar Hussain is an Oracle DBA support manager. Uh, he's the Oracle Ace Director and DBA of the Year 2011. He's also an Oracle author. I'm sure Saeed Jafar Hussain will tell you a little bit more about himself when he does come online. This di this this so Doug and this photo I've got up on the screen here. I just thought you might be interested to know where, where Redgate is and, and where I'm broadcasting from. So I'm actually in, in a little room here at the front of the building. Uh, this was taken on our 13th uh, anniversary last year. So we've been going for nearly 14 years now. Uh, and I'm actually sat there at the back. If you don't know about Redgate, we provide tooling primarily for database developers and administrators. Over 600,000 professionals use Redgate software, including 93% of Fortune 100 companies. So lots of the companies, the big companies that you've heard of, so companies like Amazon, Cardio, Cardinal Health, Citigroup, General Electric, Google, Microsoft, uh, use our tooling. Our philosophy is to design highly usable and reliable tools that solve problems commonly faced by DBAs and developers. In terms of our support for the Oracle database, uh, we have three tools that make up the deployment suite for Oracle. 
and all of these tools have been designed to solve particular and specific problems, things that are quite tricky, quite difficult, and we try and achieve that in a very simple way. So our three tools make up the deployment suite for Oracle. We have a, a tool that helps compare and deploy schemas. Uh, we have one that does the same for static data and table data. And we also have a new product called Source Control for Oracle, which makes it really easy for you to source control database code. This is something that's quite tricky. It's not a, a system like SVN or TFS. It actually hooks into SVN and TFS and enables you to source control your database code in much the same way as you can source control as you can easily source control application code. If you're having difficulties in source control and database code or you just want to know a little bit more about this new tool, please do hang around after the after today's webinar where I'll be doing a demonstration. You can see a, a little preview of the screen up, up on the uh, screen now, of the UI rather. Before we, before we hand over, just one last point. This webinar is just one of a, a number of things that I do and, and particularly that Redgate does. We, we really believe in supporting the community. We want to help you guys uh, learn and, and, and do better work and, and help you out, fill in the gaps where, where you're struggling for information and resources. So this webinar is just one of the initiatives that I manage for our Oracle community. Uh, you can find out more at redgate.com forward slash oracle hyphen education. And also uh, I set up and I edit the All Things Oracle blog. And you can see we've got a, a picture up on the screen here. And there's a, a series that Saeed Jafar Hussain has recently published on Oracle Database 12C new features, please do check it out. There's a whole whole host of information on there and some really great stuff. Okay, so that's enough about Redgate. Let's let's get going with the main presentation. I'm going to hand over now to Saeed Jafar Hussein for his presentation on Oracle 12 Rack Upgrade Best Practices. Please do bear with me in case there's any uh, technical issues. Hello. Hi, sorry, Jafari, but your uh, sound is good. Uh, I will uh, leave yeah. things with you now. Can you can you see my screen? I can see your screen. Yes. Okay. Are we good to go now? Please do. Yes. Thank you very much, James. Hi, hello and welcome. My name is Sayed Jafar Hussain. I'm tuning in straight from Riyadh once again for you, this webinar. Uh, this webinar is all about how to upgrade your Oracle cluster to 12C. It's going to be one hour long session during which we will focus and discuss the best practices to upgrade your cluster as well as RAC database. Most of my presentations and seminars are tend to start with some intensive questions that basically things by most of the DBAs as well as an organization. So this webinar is not exceptional. So I'm going to start off my session discussing some questions that usually every DBA thinks whenever a new release is announced by the Oracle. So going with the question does it really matter which version of Oracle is being used? Is it mandatory to upgrade? So these are these sort of the questions us, uh, usually typically every DBA discuss when they were, whenever there is a new release of Oracle. So now this session also focus some of those uh, points uh, to know that do we really need to go with the upgrade or we just we live as it is our environment. So this presentation, as I said, upgrading to Oracle RAG 12C, best practices, one hour long presentation. And I'm intended to cover all this point. Uh, why upgrade? This is the most uh, burning question that everybody thinks in themselves. And uh, we are also going to discuss some of the very key new features of RAG 12C. And of course, upgrade path and uh, compatibility matrix. Then we will go ahead with preparing for upgrade and then how to do 
upgrade infrastructure on your SM upgrade as well as we'll see how to downgrade a successful or partially successful upgrade to its early release. Once we finish with ASM and grid infrastructure upgrade, we will discuss the uh, available methods or options to do a database upgrade as well as what are their limitation and uh, pros and cons. At the end of the database upgrade, I'm going to explain the process to downgrade any successful upgrade database and we end up, uh, we conclude the session referring some of the references that I have taken for this presentation. Here is a little bit introduction about myself. Uh, as you know, my name is Sayed Jafar Hussain. I am database support manager, work for a bank here in Riyadh. I have over 20 years of IT experience, which includes 14 years as an Oracle DBA. I am an Oracle Edge Director and Certified Master, along with some RA, uh, OCP and RAC certification. Most recently, I was one of the beta testers of Oracle Database 12C. I have been awarded as best DB of the year back in 2011 and this was my interview and profile published in January Oracle Magazine 2012. I co-authored two RAG books two, two years ago on 11G and just recently I have co-authored another book Expert Oracle RAG 12C. This was just released on August 14. This discuss more about Oracle RAG and 12C, how to upgrade, what are those internal things changed in 12C. So let's start the session discussing why upgrade. As I said in the beginning, a million dollar question comes into every DBS mind, shall I upgrade or not? Many people think my environment is stable. Do I really need to care about upgrade? Do I need to always race up to have a race with Oracle versions? So these are the questions, these are of the questions that every DBA usually thinks inside himself. So the, cost, the answer is not just right away, you cannot say yes or no, because there are many key points or situations that say yes and no. So let's discuss some of the uh, key points that people say, yeah, we're going to go ahead with the upgrade, and somebody say, no, we are not going for the, for the upgrade. So let's discuss some of those important points. So let's talk with uh, the negative first. Say why people are afraid to go with upgrade or why people say or an organization say no to upgrade. Uh, it's not just the, it's not, the list is not just restricted what I have mentioned over here. It could be more. If you have anything, please uh, send it to me. Uh, it, it, it will be helpful for me so that in next presentation I can put forward these points. But in my opinion, in my perspective, these are the four factor that uh, <clears throat> step back for our upgrade. So the first thing is legacy application. What does it mean legacy application? Maybe I have a very critical application which is not supporting the new release 8. So when I contact the application vendor, it says the application needs more extensive testing on the new, new version so we cannot go ahead or maybe the company that provides this application is no longer exist or maybe they don't have technical people or technical expertise to test these new futures. So another thing, can't afford a lengthy outage of business critical application. Just imagine you work for a bank and you earn two to three hours of downtime and the management always thinks downtime is like a service interruption and they say, okay, we are good with the current environment, why do we need to do upgrade? No, let's wait for some more time or maybe we are not yet ready. And then this factor, most of the, most of the organization may be lacking of proper testing environment. As we all knew that before we go with any new version, it is highly important that you do you are testing properly before you take it to the production. You go with the testing, you go with the SIT, UAT, and then pre-production, all the stuff. So most of the companies may have, but some of the companies, they lack of proper testing environment. And another point is lack of skills and support personnel. <clears throat> I have seen many organizations where a DBA and uh, de a developer, they combine as a single employee. So he act as DBA as well as uh, developer. So sometimes uh, they, they don't take this risk to go with this personal or maybe lack of technical skills. So in my consideration, people or organizations say no, 
maybe because of these valid reasons. So going with the positive talk, so why people say yes to upgrade our organization, they say, yeah, we are going with the upgrade. The first thing that comes into my mind is organization standards. Most of the big companies or named companies, they want to have up-to-date software in their environment because this is organization policy or standard. So if you, are, if you are lucky to be in one of those organization, you are always encouraged to go with the upgrades and do the testing and see how much you're going to benefit with the new releases. And another thing that forces you basically is what I call lifetime support policy. What I call lifetime support policy is basically has a limitation on every release, uh, like five years, eight years, nine years. And also you're going to get like extended support or maybe premium support and all the stuff, but sometimes they force you to say, yes, we are going to stop this version. There will be no more patches or no longer any features available. So you are at the edge, you must go with the new release. So this, this could be another point that say, yeah, maybe sometime by force you have to go with the upgrade. Another one to benefit from exciting new features, sometimes uh, uh, you can benefit overall performance, maybe administrative thing like, okay, we go with this new feature, we're going to gain all these things in order to improve things. So people will say, yeah, this is what I was looking forward, so I got it in this release, I must go with this upgrade. And the other one is bug fixes. Maybe you have been victim of so many bugs, bugs in your current release and you are desperately looking to upgrade your, your environment to the new release. So these are the points that comes into my mind. As I said, this is not just the limitation. It could, there could be many more points that say yes and no. But these are the points that comes into my mind, basically. Uh, before I jump on before I jump in and start right away with the uh, upgrade and all the stuff, uh, let me bring you those key new features that were introduced with 12C in respect of uh, real application clustering technology. <coughs> the, one of the most new feature and uh, the mostly widely talked feature was flex cluster. Although the stand cl standard cluster still is available and I and very well can be defined in 12C, you have a new type of cluster, it's called flex cluster. So what is, the, what is this flex cluster? So how we are going to benefit with this? And what is the difference between a standard cluster and flex cluster? In a standard cluster, whether it is, be it is in 12C or 11G or 10G, in a standard cluster, the nodes in a cluster are tightly integrated with each other through a private interconnect. And on top of that, they have direct access to the storage for read and write. So if you have, for example, like a hundred nodes in your cluster, all hundred nodes are tightly integrated through the private interconnect to each other and they, they all, ha all need to have access to the storage as well. Whereas when it comes to flex cluster, the flex cluster term technology is little bit different than the standard cluster. In flex cluster, it, it is categorized as hub and leaf nodes. Hub nodes is nothing but similar to standard cluster, where hub nodes are connected to each other through the interconnect, just like a standard cluster, and they have direct access to the storage. Whereas leaf nodes, they are not connected to each other through the interconnect. Rather, all these leaf nodes are connected to a hub node. A hub node can have, can have multiple leaf nodes. A leaf node cannot be part of multiple hub nodes. And you can have hub nodes without leaf nodes, but you cannot have leaf nodes without hub nodes. So imagine if you have a very complex environment and you want to go with like 500 nodes and all of this having all private interconnect is going to put more pressure and going to put more load on your interconnect. So if you go with flex cluster, it's very flexible and scalable. You can go more than 500, 600 clusters. So this is just a brief overview about the cluster. It's not intended to discuss everything. And the second new feature, the very notable and uh, uh, 
very essential feature is Flex ASM. Actually, Flex Cluster and Flex ASM basically goes hand in hand. If you don't have Flex ASM, you cannot simply go with Flex Cluster. So they go in, they go basically hand in hand. So you have Standard ASM and Flex ASM. So what is Standard ASM? As we all knew that every node must have a single instance in a standard cluster. So uh, all the RDBMS instances, database instances, communicate the database through the ASM instance. So, so every node must contain ASM instance. In case of one single ASM instance failure on that particular node, all the database instances running on that node will be terminated abruptly. So you have a single point of failure here with this approach. Whereas in Flex ASM, you can have a ASM instance shared between the nodes. So this will basically going to avoid the single point of failure. If you look at the Flex ASM architecture or the diagram to your right, you see there are four nodes. One node one, node three, node three has is ASM instance up and running. Whereas the node four ASM in Node 4 has no ASM instance, rather Node 4 is referring to Node 1 ASM instance. Or you can have a separate node with just running only ASM instance. Now let's get started with the upgrade details and our more, more focusing on like the best practices and the methods that are available to upgrade your rack as well as and rack database. So one of the most important factors before you uh, start your before you start upgrading your cluster environment is the <coughs> checking the compatibility and upgrade path of your existing environment. For example, if your current environment is falling in this list, the one which I have listed, then you are good to go with a direct upgrade. If your current environment, rack environment is not falling into these categories, then you need an indirect upgrade. So you have to go first upgrading close to one of these mentioned here and then you go with D12C upgrade. So as part of a cluster upgrade, you what you're going to do, you perform ASM and grid infrastructure upgrade. In first place, it can be a rolling upgrade or non-rolling upgrade. And of course from 11G release 2 with patch 2 I guess 1120202 all the upgrades are out of place upgrade. This basically saves a lot of upgrade time and reduce drastically your down uh, time is required for the uh, system down time. In a rolling upgrade when you when you perform a upgrade process on a particular node the other nodes in cluster will be up and running without any interruption. So only that node which is performing upgrade process will be impacted during the course of that upgrade. In an unrolling upgrade, you are going to shut down the cluster across all the nodes and then you are going to perform your upgrade. In this, uh, in this approach, you need entire downtime of your cluster. 12C basically supports rolling as well as non-rolling upgrades. And of course, you cannot do in-place upgrade from 11G release 2 patch 2, I guess. So after you upgrade your grid infrastructure and ASM, then you move on to upgrade, uh, you move on installing the 12C database. <coughs> so you can do grid infrastructure and ASM upgrade together or you can do it individually. For example, if you are pre-11G release 2, like uh, 10G release 2 or 11G release 1, you know there are two separate homes for cluster as well as an ASM. So what you can do is either you do it together or you do it individually. So in, if you want, if you decide to go with individual approach, you first do the upgrade of your grid infrastructure followed by ASM using the ASM configuration assistant. But as a best practice and best method, it is highly recommended that you do your upgrade grid infrastructure and ASM all together. After you apply the upgrade, after you complete the ASM and grid infrastructure upgrade, if there are any latest CRS PSU patches, you just go ahead and apply. After the grid infrastructure and ASM 
upgrade, then you go ahead and install 12C database RDBMS software in a separate directory. After that, apply any latest PSU patches in Oracle 12C home. After successful installation of a database software, uh, then it comes to upgrade database options. See, you can do install at the same time you can do upgrade, but the best approach is just install the software and then later on, according to your convenience, you can go ahead with the upgrade databases. If it is a single database, maybe you can do it, but if you have multiple databases or if you are having other plans, it is always recommended that you go with installation and then upgrade database approach. Once you finish upgrade, install and upgrade database, then final thing is doing the post upgrade steps like adjusting your scripts, adjusting your enterprise manager settings and all those stuff and backup scripts and home location and everything. Preparation is the key to every successful installation upgrade project. We all strongly believe in these codes, right? Why? Because if your preparation is strong, then there is, uh, there is unlikely that you fail either any installation or upgrade project. So, we will see what are very important pre-upgrade prerequisites. So, what you need to do is first verify whether your existing operating system is certified with 12C release 1 or not. So you have to go to Oracle Metalink, uh, my, my Oracle support, then see your existing operating system is certified for the new release. If not, you have to have your operating system upgrade. After that, if your, upgrade, if your operating system is certified for the upgrade, then the next thing is to check the kernel parameters and packages that are required for Oracle 12C release 1. And also you need to look for uh, additional OS groups. If you are coming from 10 release 2 or 11 release 1, in 11G release 2 there are additional admin groups that are required like ASM group and all those things. So you have to go ahead and create all these things before you kick off your upgrade procedure. And of course, Look for Oracle base location and home location. As I told you that uh, your grid home must be outside your Oracle base location because you are going to perform out of place upgrade. So this is mandatory. Ensure you have a different location and you have proper permissions and to read and write into these directories by all nodes. And also you require a root or sudo user access because you're going to execute some scripts uh, root upgrade or root.sh as root so you need to ensure that you have the password with you instead of waiting for your Unix admin. Before Just before you start your upgrade and uh, make sure that you unset all these parameters on the command prompt of the local node from where you are initiating the upgrade process. As I told you that you're going to have a different directory where you will install this 12C as part of upgrade, uh, grid infrastructure as well as database software. So you need to make sure your mount point, for example, U00 on Windows, or oh sorry, on Unix platform, you have ample of space to accommodate the softwares. And also you need to have enough time space. This all preparation is very important to avoid any failures or any shortage of uh, uh, required resources for upgrade process. <clears throat> and very important factor is backup your current environment, backup your OCR and make sure you backup your cluster and Oracle homes. In case of any failures or any disaster occurrence, you should be in a position to go back and restore the previous version. And just note down before you start your upgrade that your active one as well as software version pointing to the same one. In case of uh, you get a different result for active version as well as software version, that means the previous upgrade or installation that you have done is not complete on all the nodes. You need to make sure that CRS active version and software version reflect to the same version. A few heads up here. Uh, for example, if you are upgrading your database from 11G to 
12C or from 10 to 12C, uh, make sure, uh, just remember that you cannot upgrade the standard cluster to flex cluster. You can do only upgrade of standard cluster to standard cluster. If you at all use, if you at all you thinking that you need to go for flex cluster, what you have to do is first upgrade your standard cluster to 12C standard cluster and then later on subsequently you can enable the flex option to your upgraded cluster. And another thing before you go to 12C, the very important fact, the a very important point is make sure you are voting on OCR files, they reside on a disk group rather than on raw or block devices because 12C the support raw on block devices. So you are voting and OCR must be in the SMDs group in order to go with 12C upgrade. So let's see how we can upgrade a two node 11203 cluster to 12C release one. Before you start, as I said, after all the preparation, it's best thing to do validate the readiness of uh, your nodes for an upgrade. So here is the syntax that you use basically. The first one is syntax and the second one is example. Uh, sorry for the mistake. There is a little uh, a slight modification with this uh, uh, checking the validating the readiness of upgrade uh, comparing to AVNG release 2 and 12C release 1. So you you have to specify the destination CRSO and the destination version of your new release. For example, now my existing system, uh, exi existing environment is 11.2.0.1 and my destination is this and destination version is 11.2.0.1. So after you go through this and then go through the list and if you see everything is okay, you're good to go and then you start your upgrade. In case if there are any important uh, warning messages or maybe serious errors, then you need to address this before you go with the upgrade process. For example, now let's imagine that uh, everything is fine in place and we are good to go with uh, upgrade. So I'm going to demonstrate with a few slide decks and uh, of uh, upgrading cluster to 12C to node cluster. So from 12C staging area, run run installer, you have to initialize a run installer and you get all these options, install, configure grid infrastructure and as well as upgrade Oracle grid infrastructure or automatic storage management. So you select the third option to upgrade your existing environment. So if, if you already have existing environment, it's going to sense and uh, get you those all the nodes. Here you can select all the nodes or you can select subset of nodes, but it is very important that you select all the nodes to perform your upgrade. After the node selection, you will see some scan information, which is the normal information. And there is something new that has been introduced in 12C, which is a grid infrastructure management repository option. Grid, if, what is it, grid management repository option? Why it is there? It is, uh, first thing, it is only possible to create or configure this management repository during the creation of a new installation or upgrade. For example, if you say no to this option and you wanted to configure later on or after your upgrade or installation, it is not possible. So far, it is only possible that you do it either while installing a new cluster or during the upgrade. So what is this management repository is basically? Uh, when you choose this option, Oracle cluster is going to create a single instance database named MGMTDB. This database is going to manage by the cluster itself and this runs always on a single node. For example, this data this single instance will be configured on the local node from where you start this upgrade. In case of this node failure, the instance is going to automatically fail over to a surviving node in one of the in one of the node in the cluster. So what basically this management repository is all about? You might have heard about cluster health monitoring for monitoring the uh, database uh, OS statistics. 
it was re named as uh, IDP, if I'm not wrong, previously. And then with 11G02, 11.2.03, they started calling as cluster health monitoring. Uh, this database uh, basically collects all the statistical data and put into the repository. So this is this is required to diagnose your cluster health issues and node eviction issues. So what I am going to lose in case if I am saying no to this option, you are not going to lose anything. If you say no to this feature, <coughs> all the CHM cluster health monitoring features are disabled if you don't configure this. And this database will reside in the same ASM disk group that has been used for OCR and voting disk. So if you are going to configure your ASM, uh, sorry, OCR and uh, voting disk in ASM and you intend to have this database management repository, it is very important that you, put, uh, you have a large sized uh, disk group. This database is managed like uh, the other rack database. You can use a service CTL to stop start the database. And you go through some of the screenshot which I have bypassed basically because you have nothing special to see. You can simply say next, next to proceed. Now here is a root script execution. This is a new feature in 11, uh, in 12C. In previous releases, uh, once you finish your upgrade, the OUI is going to prompt you to run root, uh, root upgrade.sh manually. Now in 12C it has been automated. Either you can authenticate a pseudo user to run this root uh, upgrade script automatically after completion of the root, after the completion of the software installation uh, grid infrastructure to perform your upgrade or you can use pseudo columns as well. If you don't select this automatic uh, run configuration script, then you will be prompted to run this root upgrade at the end of the upgrade to complete your upgrade process. So if you already knew root password on you want this to be run automatically as part of the upgrade, so you can provide the credential uh, password for the root user or pseudo column. This is a new feature in 12C. In case you select the automatic option to run as a root, so there is another new thing in 12C. So you have an option to run this root upgrade in batches. There will be three batches of most, like batch 1, batch 2, batch 3. So you can categorize all your nodes. For example, if you have nine nodes, you can say my node 1, 2, 3 will be run this root upgrade in batch 1. So they will be run in one patch altogether, so it's like a parallel upgrade. And then you will say two, uh, three, four, five in another patch, and then six, seven, eight, nine in another batch. So you can divide them in batches so that while your upgrade is running on these three batches, the other nodes will be up and running without any interruption. And the good thing about this is, uh, unless until you don't specify, yeah, uh, yeah, the input that yes, I want to proceed with the another batch is not going to proceed. Well, this option is only available if you say automatic root upgrade SH execution. So after this root application, then you comes to the like a software upgrade completion. For example, uh, when you do the upgrade, basically what it does is it is going to install the software uh, grid infrastructure into a new directory. If you don't choose that automatic uh, execution of root upgrade, here it comes the manual root upgrade execution. So you have to go manually and execute from the local node and then onto individual nodes. After you successfully execute that uh, root upgrade, then you're going to proceed with the other options in the update procedure upgrade procedure. So what basically root upgrade SH is doing over here? Until you run root upgrade SH, your cluster, your earlier cluster on the local node will be up and running. So what you have done so far, what Oracle has done so far until you run this root upgrade SH is just install your grid infrastructure software and then copy it over other remote nodes. So when you run root upgrade SH, the actual 
a period of your cluster star and the ACM kicks off. So what you are going to do is you are going to run this root upgrade SH on the local node first and then followed by sequen sequentially or parallelly except the last node on other nodes. So if you run this root upgrade on the first node, this is what you are going to likely see on your screen. You will see on the first box of red colored ASM upgrade has started and then your previous cluster is stopped and it brings up the new cluster automatically. And when you run on the last node, this root upgrade.sh, you will see that your cluster is stopped and successfully upgrade to 12C. After you successfully up, uh, execute root upgrade SS execution on the first node, let's do the query to see what is your version is. You see as CRS active version to the previous release, but CRS software will be pointing to the new release. Why? Because as I told you in the beginning, if you have incomplete upgrade, you tend to see this. So as long as you have a successful upgrade across all the nodes, you are not going to see active as well as CRS software version as a say version. So the second example on the screen shows that after you are successful upgrade, root upgrade, uh, CRS upgrade, you're going to see your active as well as software version as tools. After the upgrade, these are the uh, post upgrade checks verification. You can see grep uh, d.bin where it will show you that which version of uh, binaries or demands are running now. So let's see how you can downgrade to previous version. See this is very important when you start something and you must have a backup plan in your mind. Maybe be it a successful upgrade or a partially successful upgrade or a failed upgrade. Sometimes it doesn't go well with your upgrade and maybe you start getting a lot of complaints about the new upgrades then maybe uh, your organization thinks of revert back going back to the earlier version. So it's always better to have backup backup plan or backup plan in your mind when you do some upgrades, important upgrades. So here it comes, uh, the procedure, how to downgrade. For example, if you are pre-11G release 2, like 11G release 1 or 10 something, this is the procedure that you need to follow. You have to execute this uh, root CRS PL downgrade on the second node, not on the local node. For example, if I, if I am going to downgrade my cluster to my earlier release, say 12C to 11G release 2, um, what I have to do is I have to go to node 2 and then run this command and then a node 3, node 4 as well as on all nodes and then when it comes to the local node you have to specify as downgrade minus last node. So when you, uh, when you, when you say root CRS uh, downgrade on those nodes basically what this is, what this script is going to do is it going to shut down the cluster on those nodes and when you finish with the last node then this will perform the downgrade of your Oracle OCR, Oracle Cluster Registry. Later on you have to update the registry with the 12C and 11G information. If you are, if you have upgraded from 11G release 1 what you have to do is in order to bring the earlier version cluster web, you have to run root.sh from Oracle 11G release 1 home. If it is 11G release 2 or higher, what you have to do is make sure if you have configured the management database, you deconfigure it and then you execute this downgrade procedure. After you finish this downgrade on the last node, update the registry, uh, Oracle inventory basically and then unlike 11G release 1, we are not going to run the root.ss, rather we are going to bring up the cluster manually. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, I am going to start my 11G release 2 cluster manually. So that was the procedure to downgrade your cluster to its earlier release. So we have come to an end where we showed you how to upgrade your cluster grid infrastructure as well as ASM and also a procedure to downgrade your 12C, a successful upgrade or partially upgraded cluster to 
its earlier release. It's always important that uh, you check the readiness before you do any installation or upgrade. So that's what we are going to do. So we have finished the first phase where GI, Grid Infrastructure and ASM has been successfully upgraded and the second stage is to just install the 12C database software. After you check all the prerequisites, uh, go to the software staging location where you have 12C uh, DBMS software and initialize run installer. If you have database running on the same system, you are going to get upgrade an existing database option as well. But as I, so, as I told you in the beginning, we are going with only database software installation first and later we move on to upgrade. So you select just install database software only and then it's like uh, what you do regularly. I just intend to show you only one screen where you will select only software installation, not going with screen by screen. So it's just like a typical method that you have been following up uh, in your installations. So nothing new offered. So let's see now how we can upgrade a RAG database. And more importantly, what you have to do is you have to make sure you have backed up your database. You have a latest uh, database backup. This is just to save yourself instead of going for uh, suicide. You know, if you don't have a backup and something goes wrong, then you will be suiciding yourself. So to prevent yourself from this position, make sure you have a latest backup before you execute the upgrade procedure. Uh, this screen, uh, this slide basically talks about what are those database that supports 12C direct upgrade and what are those database versions that doesn't support direct, sub direct upgrade. For example, if you have 11G release 2 database or maybe 11G release 1 which is 11.1.07 or 11.2.02, you can uh, See, these three database from the bottom like 10, to, uh, 10 to 05, 11 on 07 or 11 to 07, they are the candidate for a direct upgrade. If you are on like 7.3 or 8, 8 one, if your data version, database version is any of these, uh, this is a generic uh, slide talking about to database upgrade. Uh, it's not just uh, only that database. If you have a standalone database, so this rule is going to be applied as well. So you have to see what is the current version of your database and in order to take your database to 12C, you are to see this path. If you are on 9.2 and uh, if your database release is 9.2.0.8, what you have to do is first you have to upgrade your database to 11.2.0.2 and then directly go to 12C. So you, this screen basically represents the upgrade path of your database depending upon the version that you are running currently. Let's talk some of those uh, best uh, tools or maybe uh, methods supported by Oracle to perform database upgrade. There are uh, several methods or like options which can let you perform database upgrade. So if I have listed a few very important or uh, very oftenly used options. Uh, one is manual method where you will have your control while upgrading and then of course uh, you have database upgrade assistant tool and you can do your database upgrade through data pumps import export you can also use golden gate streams transportable table space create table as select there are these are the different methods <laughs> remember each of these method comes with its own set of uh, uh, benefits as well as limitations so you have to see which method is appropriate for your environment sometimes Maybe the one which I am saying is good may not be the appropriate option for your version or your environment. So you basically need to go through all these limitations and the advantages of these individual methods. This presentation will focus on two methods of uh, database upgrade, a manual upgrade as well as how to use a uh, database upgrade configuration assistant tool. Before you do your upgrade, it is very important that you know what are those new features or new additions, new enhancements with regards to your upgrade. Sometimes this is going to give you some benefits like uh, you can expedite or you can speed up your backup pro uh, you can, your upgrade process. 
sorry. Okay, let me talk some of those uh, new features introduced with the uh, upgrade process. The first one is the pre-upgrade information tool. If you remember, if you are going to perform your database upgrade manually, there used to be a script that you perform in order to know uh, what are the things that you are missing for this upgrade. For example, like uh, uh, cleaning your recycle bin, collecting the statistic on your fix or dictionary tables or maybe like uh, what are those invalid objects and all those things. So this utility has been replaced with a new tool called pre-upgrade information tool which is pre-upgrade.sql. You will find this one under 12c home rdbms admin directory. So if you are going for manual upgrade, you should run this script manually. Whereas if you go with the dbua configuration, uh, upgrade configuration tool, it inherits, it automatically initiates the script for you. Uh, in turn, this script is going to create uh, three lo uh, one log and two SQL uh, files, scripts basically. The first one pre-upgrade.log, which is a log file. After all those analysis, performing the pre-upgrade checks for the table space, uh, table spaces in case you need to increase the data file size in order to cope up with uh, your upgrade or you need to tune in some parameters or you need to increase your AGA or maybe you need to note some like uh, <coughs> Uh, invalid objects and all those things. So this, uh, all this information is logged in uh, pre-upgrade.log file. Um, this log and uh, those uh, pre and post fix up scripts are uh, generated under Oracle Home or uh, Oracle based directory. So this pre-upgrade fix up SQL is basically gives you if there is anything that you need to fix up before you go with the upgrade. <laughs> And there is a post upgrade fix up script that will tell you to run the script after the database. So it is very important that for a manual upgrade, you need to uh, read this log as well as uh, refer these SQL scripts to perform any pre and post fix ups. And there is another new addition to database upgrade which is parallel upgrade utility CAT CTL. See, uh, usually a database uh, upgrade uh, takes somewhere like two hours and let me emphasize one thing, database upgrade is not based on the size of the database. It is purely based on the number of components that have been configured in your database. The more options you have configured, the more time it is going to take for your upgrade. In my past history, in past experience, uh, over 400, uh, 300, 200 database upgrades, I have seen a database upgrade was taking somewhere two to three hours. So it doesn't matter how big your database, because I have done the database upgrades a range of uh, terabytes in gigabytes as well, but they take the same amount of time. And the second thing, uh, manual upgrade as well as the upgrade from the DBUA tool takes the same amount because they are going to do the same job. So there is, you know, people sometimes have misconception that DBUA is going to longer time, manual is be faster. No, this is based purely on the number of options, components you, that you have configured in your database. So what is an upgrade basically? Upgrade is nothing but uh, changing the dictionary information as well as the information to reflect to the new feature of those uh, components installed in your database. Upgrade method is not going to touch your database in any way, so your database, your data, your actual data will not be touched during the course of upgrade. The only dictionary information and the component information will be reflected to 12C by modifying and recreating things. Okay, parallel upgrade utility <coughs> Is a, is, a, is a good feature actually. Uh, this will help you reducing your uh, downtime that is required for the upgrade, which uh, most of the companies, you know, uh, whenever you go and say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to upgrade my database, the first question that comes from the application as well as management is how long you want the down, uh, downtime. So probably, you know, the companies as well as application owners, they need very minimal downtime to perform any activity. So this is very good that you can you can run things in parallel so that it will expedite and reduce overall downtime that is required for CPU. You you also have option to run in no parallel as well as uh, which is the standard that you were doing in previous databases. 
here is the method that uh, explains a procedure to upgrade a RAG database. For example, if you have a RAG database named MyPRDB, so these steps are going to tell you how to upgrade your database. First and foremost, uh, you have to shut down the database. When you use SRV CDL database minus D, all the instances of this RAG database is going to be shut down. And, and from the local node, from instance 1 basically, you mount the database and then disable the archive log mode. If you disable the archive log mode, then your upgrade will be a little bit faster. If you have your database in no archive mode already, which I don't think so because it is unlikely that uh, any production database will be running in no archive mode. And then for a RAG database, you need to make sure the cluster database parameter is turned to false. And later on, after you change database to no archive mode and you disable the cluster database feature, shut down the database and <clears throat> make sure your SP file or P file TNS configuration files are copied to 12C home before you start your manual upgrade because you have to bring up your database, 11G, whatever database from the 12C home. So after you ensure that you copy it properly the server parameter file and TNS files configured uh, on 12C home, all these things. Next thing is to bring up your database from the 12C home. So on the prompt, you need to modify your current environment settings pointing to 12C home. So start up your database in upgrade mode. Start up upgrade, so your database will be started in upgrade mode and you intended to run your uh, database upgrade in parallel, what you need to do is exit from the command prompt and then go to the 12C home Perl directory and run this directory uh, run under the Perl directory, run this command cat ctl. Uh, this minus n represents, sorry, represent the parallelism. So you're going to say, for example, if you have like six CPUs, on the server and you want to utilize four CPUs so so that your, your, your upgrade process will be faster and then temp upgrade uh, db upgrade.log is a log file where this information will be written so your cat upgrade information will be basically run in parallel to speed up your things so once this script is successfully completes the next step is to Mount your database from 12C home, make sure you are on 12C home and ensure you bring your database back to archive mode and you turn on your cluster database feature and if you are going with the compatible parameter, make sure you change your compatible parameter to reflect 12C new features. Once you do all these settings, then exit, shut down the database. Now, <clears throat> if it is a RAG database, you need to upgrade the CRS information about your cluster, uh, about your cluster database. So this is the command, uh, bottom one, from bottom it is the CSRV CTL upgrade database command. So I'm going to upgrade the cluster information that is stored in cluster from my database to reflect to 12C. Once you upgrade the information, and then you start your database from 12C home. So this is the manual method. This gives you the steps. <coughs> I'm sorry uh, to upgrade your database in manual method. So now let's talk about uh, how to utilize a DBUA tool to upgrade your database. I prefer uh, DBUA over any other any other method. Why? Because there are many features that are automated, for example, like running the pre-upgrade tool utility and I have an option to uh, uh, ensure that my database is moved to no archive mode before and also I have an option to take a pre-backup and the new feature in 12C DBUA is uh, resumable database upgrades. In case of any problem occurs, the DBA, DBUA can rerun that upgrade process from the point where it was stopped. And also I get an option to upgrade my listener. If I have a listener for this database running on 11G or the previous version, there will be an option to upgrade the listener to 12C as well. So, and also I don't see any drawback on uh, DBUA using DBUA over other methods. In fact, you have more options and more features, it's more control. 
So I would recommend and I would encourage most of you to go with the DPUA tool. Uh, now let's see uh, how to upgrade a RAC database. Now you will see two options, uh, upgrade Oracle database and Oracle uh, move a data files to different release of uh, 12C. So what you all, what you all have to do is from deep, from 12C home you have to initiate a DPUA tool and it is going to sense the database of earlier version and then let you proceed with the upgrade. So the second option if you have different Oracle homes of 12C like different version you can move your data files around so that's the different thing forget about. Now we will concentrate on upgrading our previous release to 12C. So in the second screenshot uh, which is select database or upgrade it is going to list all the database running on that node or on that local node. So if you see that target home as well as source home, my source home is uh, 11203 and my target home will be 1210. And then you will, you have to pick the database uh, from source home release under the source home release, uh, see which database you are going to upgrade and make sure the status of this database on this node is up and running. Proceed next and then it comes to prerequisites checking. This is the screen where Oracle DBUA performs all the prerequisites that are required and you have all the options like uh, you can create uh, flexible for example like uh, you can create pre, post, uh, pre or post upgrade scripts. If some, some of the features or uh, some of the failures is can be ignorable you can say action as ignore or you can do revalidate. So all the options you can see here, check again, uh, everything like uh, fix option, apply and rerun everything. Once you see that everything is good and you are ready to go, then you can say next. So here you get a upgrade option as I told you that uh, running with the DBUA that uh, pre-upgrade information as well as parallel upgrade, you get both options here. So you can define your parallelism. Uh, to run your database in upgrade in parallel. Also you have option to recompile your objects post database upgrade and there you can set as well as parallelism. Mm, and also you have got more options like gather statistic before upgrade and also make some table spacing to read only more and all those things. And this location will tell you where you want to put the auditing as well as diagnostic information for this upgrade. As I said in the beginning, like uh, if you have any previous version instance configured for this database and running and you will also get the option to upgrade your listener to 12C. Uh, there is a new recovery option. Uh, you will get two options, use Armand backup option as well as uh, your customized backup. So if you want uh, DBA to perform a pre database upgrade backup, you can choose with this so that database will take the upgrade and in case of any failure, you can generate restore points from where you can restart your upgrade as well. Uh, mostly people will go with I have my own backup and restore strategy because as I said, we believe things like we do on our own rather than automatic sometimes. So it's your choice which option is best suitable for you, you can go with that option. After that, uh, you will get a database upgrade information summary which will tell you what is the current version and which version the target like upgraded version and you will see what are those parameters will be changed. If you scroll down the first uh, upgrade summary screen, you will see all those related informations. And then when you say finish, your actual database upgrade will be started. As I said, it's going to take like somewhere like a minimum of two hours based on number of components that are configured in the database. Once everything is finished, you will see 100% successful and then upon completion, you will see upgrade results screen which will tell you all the upgraded information basically. So we have seen the procedure how to upgrade your database to 12C either manually or using DBUA tool. So here is a, here are a few, few slides that talks about in case if I want to downgrade 
my database for any reason, as I told you, like after the cluster upgrade for any reason, if it doesn't go well and you wanted to roll back your upgrade to its previous release, here is the list which uh, which are supported basically to a stride downgrade 11.202 and 11.203 and 11.107. By the way, you cannot downgrade your 10.205 uh, database. Why? Because the minimum parameter, compatible parameter required for downgrade is 11.107. So because of that, you just cannot go back your upgrade to that release. So what are those steps involved? Uh, before we go with the downgrade, uh, downgrading procedure, here are a few steps that uh, are precautionary steps. For example, like take a full current database backup, <laughs> complete any pre-downgrade steps like you wanted to note down uh, something from the database, don't it, and then you proceed with the downgrade in the database. So here is the, here is the method, that uh, a procedure that you can use to downgrade your database. Now let's say that uh, I have successfully upgraded my database to 12C, but for some reason I want to downgrade it back to its previous release. So what you all you have to do is first set the Oracle SID, which is your database, and you set your Oracle home uh, pointing to 12C. Connect as SysDBA and start up the database if it is shut down in downgrade mode. Mode. Uh, before you start your downgrade, downgrade procedure, make sure you spool the output into a log file. So before downgrade starts, I'm just pulling all the information to a file called downgrade.log under temp location. So once you start your database in downgrade mode, mode, so you have to run the script uh, from the 12C home, which is uh, RDBMS admin, a cat dwg or d.sql. This script will take some time to just uh, recreate all your catalog information back to these things. So once this script is successfully completes and your cursor comes back to the SQL prompt, what you have to do is shut down the database, exit from the prompt, and then you have to set Oracle home to your previous release. Earlier the home was pointing to 12C, now the, the Oracle home should point to its previous release. So once uh, you point to Oracle previous release, connect to connect to the database as SysDBA and start the database in upgrade mode and then and then you reload all your catalog information. So as usual I start up my database in upgrade mode. Uh, this should be from 11G home or whatever version that you are going to downgrade. Make sure you are connected to the earlier version software version, not from the 12C. So you start up the database in upgrade mode and then you run this cat reload.sql from 11G or the previous version under RDBMS admin location. So after the script is finished, what you need to do is shut down the database, start up and recompile all your objects. So once you successfully downgrade your database, do your uh, push downgrade steps uh, like uh, changing your scripts where you have Oracle 12C home, you can make it to 12C1 and all the stuff. So here are a few post database upgrade checklists uh, you probably uh, go through. As I told you, you have to run UTL rep to compile any invalid objects during the course of uh, upgrade process. And then UTL U12.1, it basically tells you all the components uh, that were upgraded to 12C and how much each individual component has taken. For example, uh, any Java feature, maybe it take like 45 minutes, your database update like taken like 20 minutes or maybe rack components 15 minutes. So you will see all the breakdown of your components in the database with the timeline, how long it took. So that based on that you can analyze or uh, maybe you can you can measure the downtime that is required for other databases or maybe as a record you can keep it. And then adjust your time zone according to your uh, uh, your location. And of course don't forget to collect the statistics of on your system and fixed objects. Amend any scripts that affect the new Oracle home settings. After that, uh, make sure uh, your database upgrade or 
downgrade is affected using the service CTL config database and database name. And once you finish your database uh, configuration and everything, make sure you perform a fresh database backup. And of course, compatible parameter change is one of the key things you do post upgrade. So we come to the end of the session for upgrading the database and uh, these are the few Metalink or maybe my support, my Oracle support nodes as well as you can see all these procedures and uh, 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 separate chapter in my 12C book for upgrading cluster as well as database. We have mentioned everything in that. So this is what we have discussed. So we focus how to upgrade your rack, uh, two node rack database to 12C. Hello, James. Hello, Jafar. Uh, bear with me for one moment. Do we have any questions, queries? So, thank you once again. Uh, it, it was a fantastic session, and uh, so I was just trying to get my microphone to, to be okay again. Uh, there are quite a lot of questions that have come in, so let's uh, so if you could just give me a little bit of time to try and organize these questions and then we'll get on to the the q and a before we do that i I, I do apologize there are a, a few people that seem to have logged in late. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Fortunately, we have recorded the session, so I will be sending you an email where you can, and letting you know where you can get the uh, recording from. One little uh, tip on the GoToWebinar registration page: there is a, a little link at the top which says "Show My Time Zone." If you do click on that, uh, it will display your time zone on the screen. And also the reminder emails that, that you'll get on the lead up to the session will always be show, will also show in your time zone. So that's a, a great thing to do. Uh, and a question that come in, uh, yes, we will provide the slide deck as well as the, the video. Okay, so we've got lots of questions in here, so I'm going to try and go through as many of these as we can. Uh, I am conscious that, that we've kind of gone a little bit over time. I was going to run a demonstration of source control for Oracle uh, after this session. Uh, I think it, it would probably, down to, down to time, it probably would be best to, to do that at another time. So if you're particularly interested in source control for all, uh, please do send me a, a, a message via the the uh, question panel here, or you can send me a, an email or reply to, to the email that uh, I send out with a link to the recording, uh, and I can arrange a time to go through and go over source control for Oracle with you. So before I get on to, on to the questions, uh, just a, a little note here about our next webinar, which is on the 10th of September. Uh, I'm presenting this with Kyle Haley, who's an Oracle ACE and member of the Oak Table. And this session will be on how to enable risk-free database experiments. So uh, if you're looking at ways to, uh, and tips and advice on, on how you can try stuff out without actually breaking the main application or the main database, uh, then this will be a, a really great session. So. You can find out about this session and all our other sessions at redgate.com forward slash oracle hyphen webinars. Okay, so once again, just please go with me as I go through the question. We have got quite a lot here. So the first question we have is, in case of flex cluster stroke flex ASM, 
I guess Hub has an ASM instance and Leaf has an ASM client. Is that right? And can it be reversed? Yes, of course, it can have. Uh, any any uh, Leaf node can have a Flex ASM or maybe standard ASM. No issues with that. So we can also have like a flex, one Leaf node uh, connecting with the another. Um, <clears throat> basically, what they does is uh, they don't have direct access to ASM. Uh, what they have to do is they have to connect through the standard its hub node to the ASM. Thank you. Okay, so I think we've answered that one. So next question, if we're using Cloud Control 12C, uh, do we really need a GI management repository? Which one? If you're using Cloud Control 12C, do you really need a GI management repository? GI management repository is basically to collect the statistic of your uh, uh, database uh, server nodes. So this is uh, very useful information in case of diagnosing diagnosing your uh, cluster health issues, in case if you are going to investigate why your uh, node has been evicted. So this comes uh, very handy information. So uh, if you are not going to use uh, uh, CH uh, plus, uh, repository database, then you are not going to lose anything except that you will lose some important information to uh, investigate your cluster health issues. Thank you. It's not mandatory. Great. There's a couple of questions here regarding uh, MGM TDB. Uh, so the first one is, do we need to take a backup of MGM TDB regularly with RMAN and how much space is needed? Uh, to be frank with you, uh, this is a good question. Basically, I need more uh, investigation on this because uh, there are not many people yet into the production. So we have to do some research and development on this. As I told you, these files will be stored as part of the uh, part of uh, your uh, OCR and voting disk inside that uh, ASM disk group. So maybe as far as my knowledge goes. I think you can you can perform these uh, databases uh, backups, no issues. But we have to see in case of a database failure whether it is possible to restore and all the stuff. And there is very limited information is out from the Oracle uh, on this feature and the, how the database uh, behaves and all the stuff. So you got to wait for some more time to get more details and uh, you know more internals on this database. It's limited information is out just now. So more testing and uh, things has to be tested on this. Yeah, I'll keep in mind this one. Maybe uh, I will try to blog or maybe write a short article on this in the coming time. Thank you so much for the good question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next question here, uh, if you can remember back to step nine of the upgrade, is the root password stored in file or just memory? Uh, the root password? No, it is in just the memory during the course of that upgrade only. So you don't need to worry that it's not going to store in any uh, flat file or something. This will be stored as part of in the buffer, I guess. Great, thank you. Uh, do you have any advice uh, in, on upgrading the different nodes at different times? Uh, is, is this possible? Uh, is it advisable? For example, upgrading yeah. one, one node during one window and monitoring the performance and upgrade a second node at a later time. Yes, this is very well, very well possible, but the only thing is you should not have a very long delay between the nodes because sometimes uh, if the software is different, maybe <clears throat> oh, if, as, you long, as you get long delay, then there will be more co complexity. So maybe one or two days is okay, but if you are going beyond that, maybe you are inviting troubles yourself. But this is very well possible, you can do that. Thank you. So got, the next question is quite long. Uh, if you can just bear with me whilst I, I read through it. Okay. 
Okay, I apologize. There, there more some uh, comments uh, on on this topic in general rather than actual question. So the the next question is: uh, Can you switch your CRS between eleven point two to twelve point one after you do an out of place GI stroke ASM upgrade? Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, can you what? Can you switch your CRS between 11.2 and 12.1 after you do an out-of-place GI stroke ASM upgrade? Uh, no, basically, uh, you are OCR and uh, voting this information is already upgraded because although you are using different Oracle homes for 11G as well as uh, 12C, uh, you are using a single OCR and voting disk. So when you perform the upgrade information, your OCR voting disks will get affected. So if you try to stop and bring up that uh, up, uh, cluster from 11G home, you're going to get problems. In case if you want, then I told you, you need to do the downgrade procedure. Thank you. Uh, the next question, regarding the new feature of flex clusters introduced in 12C, how does it fulfill the role at the same, uh, for the role as same of a hub mode when it's not connected to the main hubs interconnect? No, if you look at the architecture, actually the hub nodes are connected to each other and all the leaf nodes, like maybe one or more leaf nodes, they are directly connected to hub nodes. And there will be no communication, as I told you, between the leaf nodes from a particular hub. They all go through uh, connecting to the, <coughs> actually the main contact point for them is the uh, hub node here. Thank you. Uh, next question, uh, are there any changes in scan listener in 12C? Uh, no, no changes. And the next question, has a transient logical standby upgrade been test tested on 12C? Logical? Yeah, so a transient logical standby upgrade. Uh, I have no idea because I have not done this upgrade. Okay. I have just only done the cluster as well as database. Uh, there was no, uh, no environment for me to test actually. So some uh, Finally, on the, the question panel, some really great comments and feedback. Uh, it seems that everybody has enjoyed the session. So thank you for, for joining, and thank you so much for uh, leaving this feedback. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. And uh, thank you so much. Special thanks to All Things Oracle for giving this opportunity. So I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much. It was a nice presentation. Thank you very much, and if, if there are some questions that you didn't get a chance to answer or things that you think of after this session, please do yeah, uh, yeah. add them to allthingsoracle.com. I, I will put a link in the email that I send out. So Exactly. If you have not asked any question or not answered, please put all your question across uh, uh, All Things Oracle. After, then I'm going to, I will try to answer them, hopefully. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, so thank you once again for everybody for, for joining us today. Uh, as I mentioned, please do get in contact with me if you're interested in taking a look at source control for Oracle. Uh, if you're currently source controlling your database code or you're having difficulties doing it or it's something that you're actually looking at doing in the future, uh, I'd really like to, to hear from you. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great new tool that we've produced here, so please do get in touch. I will put a link in the uh, URL as well. Thank you once again, and hopefully I'll, I'll get the uh, video up and the slides up uh, before the, the weekend, uh, and I'll certainly send over the link to you. Thank you, and I hope you have a, a nice day or evening, depending on where you are in the world. Thank you once again. Bye now.